Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how y'all doing? This is Kong Ulrich. I'm Rangru, hello, hello, hello. And folks, today on Siano, it looks like we have ourselves a bit, a bit of a uh, tension between, well, between a couple of the Allies. Rang, what's going on here? Downside in blue, we have Karma playing 6 Airborne with Vanguard Income, and on the right-hand side, with Sean playing 2nd French Armoured with a Balanced Income. And is this, is this still Division 44 here, or... Machine napalm in the road at the start of the match this is a very old school strategy. But one that I think still bears a lot of usage here. And actually you can see already 762 is being deployed outside, and while he didn't quite get his troop perfectly in there, uh this did at least slow up Sean just a little bit, and now we're seeing Tetrarchs and six pounders engage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that terms, makes sense. Yes, yeah, yeah, in terms of like actually doing the napalm opener, I mean it usually doesn't work for most of the time, but on this map, on that goddamn road, fighting over this bloody town, it's not a bad calling, because it hasn't been perfect for Karma, but at least he managed to get some infantry into the town unscathed. Well, looking down to the south, for example, you can see the difference here. Uh when you have just you have Tetrarch still, don't get me wrong. But Tetrarchs facing off against two or three times their number. Yeah, they can blunt it for the moment, but this is only for half a second. This is going to be a very, very quick kill. Yep, there goes the last real AT. And meanwhile, to the north. Yeah, you can see. There we go. There's one M4A2 that's limping away. And the infantry is completely gone. Yeah. Yep, so, that's definitely, a, you know, a positive for Karma. Capping at pretty much north and side ends, even using the Tetrarchs to push pretty hard. Not looking good for him down south, as you've mentioned, Sean. This is just a battle, battle of light armor. We've got great hounds versus Tetrarchs just going at it. Well, we're definitely not going to get anything from the infantry. The infantry only have those Piats, and uh, we know how good those things are. Yeah. Some pretty heavy glider crew play here from, from Karma. Not the best infantry, but. Yeah, a little bit better than our south, so they got three submachine guns compared to just one, and a slightly better boat action. Mildly better, yeah. Mildly, yeah. I think it's like a tad, lot, a tad extra fire rate. It's kind of really quite, I don't want to say humorous per se, because all of them have died thus far, but these Tetrarchs down to the south have been heroes, man. They've, they've slowed up that engagement just long enough, I think, for other Tetrarchs to get in there. Mm-hmm. You have seen the little John being brought in as well. Try and shore things up. I have a feeling this is going to come down to who can rush the other person's flank the hardest. I mean, whether Karma can take advantage up north, or if Sean can take advantage down south. Yes, indeed. Oh, you can see right now, from the infantry perspective, that town is going to just devolve into another bloody stalemate. Yeah. And yeah, Sean's infantry is in a... Just everything in that town is in a really good position to just shoot down anything that tries to... Across the open field, yeah. And Karma he doesn't have any anti tank in that town, so he can't do anything against all that light armor. He's trying to address that real quick, though. He does have a couple of um, Tetrarch Little Johns coming forward. But, I mean, other than that, he's got what, a six pounder? Just way in the back. I do That's like up. Quick. Yeah. Yes, you're talking no, about yeah, yeah. the northern, the northern thing. By mm -hmm. all means, take it away, sir. No, just like, the Tetrarch's pushing through. I do like how the one for the gear probably behind enemy lines, confused what the hell's going on. But this is a really good push here from Karma. Hopefully, I know it's kind of one of those things. He's, I'm sure he's hoping if that what goes around doesn't come around, because having more than one Sherman up there can be decidedly nasty. And indeed, another one's being brought on in, so it's not too surprising there. Now, I'm fascinated to watch as these Tetrarchs get brought down to the south as well. We have a couple of radios, we have recon optics, and the Greyhounds one by one are going... Ooh, this is uh, starting to turn slowly into Karma's favor. Mm -hmm. Do you like Riavia, the Typhoon AT up north? I don't know where he's going to try an AT. I mean, it's really only light armor that he has to kill. Oh, well, fair, to be fair, Sherman. it's a Sherman coming in. Yeah. Sorry, this might just be... Brought in at the nick of time to try and knock out that Sherman. Except I don't think he's getting in there quick enough, unfortunately. Oh. On Typhoon, you have one job. Let's blow up tanks. 
and kill Mongol invasion fleets. Hmm. Right. And he, and exactly, that's true. And here we go, the Typhoon's making its run. And I think, is there, is there a Mozzie coming in too? Yep, and also a Mozzie. Yep. So, just trying to arrest this next push, which is completely understandable. Uh, unfortunately, he won't get there in time because of the flame troops. But the Sherman does go down, so yeah. that's that's a bonus right there. Typhoon AT can be pretty deadly in the napalm. Hitting Ralph around, allowing Karma to just briefly hold on to that hillside. I don't think for long the Sherman comes in. You no, know, Shriek, Shriek stabilizes. He doesn't need to stop for anything. I turned away for half a second. The, the last guy went down. Yes, he did. It's looking down to the south as we see glider crews, as well as I think some Canadian Paris. Yep, and a six pounder being deployed. Uh, definitely some troops in the trees to be concerned about, but really the big thing is this Sherman. Actually, yeah. basically the two Shermans down to the south. Yeah, definitely one of the issues early on for Six Airborne is dealing with any ar enemy armor. Your only armored vehicles in that E phase are those Tatriarchs, which are alright. But they require some pretty good position to make worthwhile. And also good use of those six pounds, which we should do get a decent amount of, but once again, it's you know trying to be aggressive early on, AT guns aren't aren't an aggressive unit as you might know. That's true, but he has been playing them rather aggressively thus far. Mm-hmm. Early ox and bucks, I'm actually surprised by that. But outside of it, um, there is a Sherman that's going to come right into a little John field of fire in a second. Here we yeah. go. So this first shot could be critical. <laughs> this wow. is right. Shermans are really good guys, especially to some veterans. Stabilizers. They can always pretty much get first shot off. Which is so weird because I just got the rate of fire, so that seemed awfully quick. And now the Tetrarchs are 15 rounds a minute. And on paper, Shermans are 7. So it's just it's absolutely brutal to see I that know. happen. I know. I think the Tetrarch wasn't like. It had to turn its turret just a little bit, which screwed up its own rate of fire. But yeah, I'm quite surprised by that as well. I really would have thought the Tetrarch would have got the upper hand. It looked like the upper hand was on the other foot. Mm-hmm. Or Little John. Also kind of funny to watch these glider crews engage multi gears mm -hmm. And as one shot, one kill happens, the last of the Tetrarchs, I think, are in fact dead here. He's definitely lost a lot. I don't think it really has any left over. Which is not ideal, especially against just a, I don't want to say heavily armored division, but... Compared to Six Airborne, they might as well be a pretty heavy armor division. Well, these Six Pounders are now turning into the workhorse for him. Mm -hmm. um, some more Six Pounders, Oxen Bucks, AV Engineers. Kind of weird. I'm surprised he brought in a ton of glider crew initially. I guess I can understand it somewhat. In yeah. that you definitely need to have that kind of air sats, I'm going to take the area kind of mm -hmm. moments here. Yeah, you see. Uh, what I've seen so far in Six Apple, you don't see them being used all that often. I think it's also just kind of like a, a weird thing to use this horse and troops as allies. It doesn't, doesn't. It's it's just a weird thing, you know. You don't well, think of like the personal myth, right? Yeah, yeah. But in and also, you know, more mechanically speaking, you already got a lot of very good infantry early on with Six Apple and NA phase with all the paratroopers and. Well, by B phase, you usually got the Belgian Grenadiers to help sort the lines. Quite true. Now, it looks like the town has definitely fallen into Karma's favor, though it's been a supremely bloody and just absolutely murderous grind to get there. Oh. A couple of flame troops still there, but they will not be there for long as Thompsons and flamethrowers clear them out. And not for nothing, but I think the six pounder is going to keep things contained down to the south. So I think this is shockingly the chance for Sean to kind of really impose his will to the south. Mm hmm. If he can get back into that southern forest where all the glider crews are and clear that out, 
you'll have a pretty good chance, because if you can secure that, you can start moving your way up north and flank the town of a good old half-track push. We're getting a couple Cromwells to the south, so it uh, looks like he's going to try to focus a lot of his next couple of minutes here. Indeed, yep, Mozzie coming back in to kind of burn out some of those troops. Mm -hmm. yeah, the glider crew is really just doing that job of just buying time. Yes. Yes. Ooh, half track going down. Um, we often touch on the force multiplier ability, let's say, of air power, and we can definitely mm -hmm. see it right there. Without this, the, uh, the mosquitoes, even if they haven't done a lot of immediate kills, they have just been so important shutting down the second blend day from kind of playing to their strength of mobility. Yeah, those napalm uh, bombing runs have really been on point and slowing down Sean. And it's also been pretty helpful that Sean has really brought up much anti-air or airplanes trying to shoot down said mozzies. So it's good to actually see air power being pretty useful for, for, for runs rather than just getting completely shut down all the time. That said, we still do have this 105 OBCA coming on in. Which is rather thick skinned. And a 155, I mean, we're. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking up Karma's perhaps resurgent opportunities here. But it still ain't pretty. Oh. Mm -hmm. The Typhoon might help. There you go. Ouch. Yeah, the yeah, off map should probably do some pretty devastating damage as everything is so bunched up in the town. But also, I really got to give shots to Karma for still holding on to up north. I mean, it's not a major. He doesn't, he doesn't have major defenses yet, but it's just enough to hold the enemy ridgeline just a tad to really deter Sean from just trying to get into the town, even though there's only a single guy inside that town. He's probably a little bit lonely in that church. I think that's the guy who's got halitosis. They are like, you know what? We cannot stand him anymore. Just leave him where he is. We'll just leave Johnny in the church, okay? It's your all move up. No, no one really likes him anyway. <laughs> I mean, the last French unit to the south dies, and, and, and now suddenly this new wave of infantry, and, and a Daimler, forgive me, including some Frenchmen, some traitors, Frenchmen, Moving on in, it looks like they're going to deploy south, pick up that next forested area. Ah, this 155 is putting in absolutely perfect artillery. Oh, yeah. I really have crazy? anything to follow up, and the answer yeah, is no. Exactly. Because that yeah, would have been the perfect follow up. Just rushing a few half tracks here yeah, and capturing, like, <laughs> all the troops. Well, and 155s, I mean, those barrages. Uh, 105s, in my mind, don't always do a ton of damage, but there's definitely a lot of shells. 155 is probably the first time you really get some really decent suppression values. Yes, especially against, like, infantry targets. And yes. Light armor. You see, you want to get, you know, once you get to, like, 200 millimeters, the end tanks start feeling the hurt. You see it already. One squad down, several more squads already pinned. Oh, it's just... Nasty, nasty work here from Sean, but once again, nothing to really follow it up with, so, you know, give Karma a minute or two, gather his things, and he'll be back, 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 back on the front line, if I can say my words correctly. I thought, hand to God, that I was some crazy Canadian hip speak, you know, since all the youngsters <laughs> are using these days, and I was like, damn, rank is just too cool for school. Um... Now, Daimler down to the south, kind of funny about the Daimler, it kind of reminds me very much of a humbler, humbler kind of Mark III. Yeah. Um, but that 40mm AP shell is decidedly much more deadly in my mind. Yeah, Little Jones against, especially, you know, more regular medium tanks like Sherman's, can do, you know, pretty damn good work if they can get the first shot off. Like, they're all nice little vehicles with uh, pretty high AP, but if they get <laughs> shot at... Vehicle. Yeah. But Typhoon AT, once again, coming in and on point, <laughs> stressing <Okay>. out <laughs> everything. Yeah. Like, wow. Like, one of those rockets run astray and hit the six-pounder right on, and then here comes the bombing runs from the Tempest. This is beautiful air power play. Armor. Not surprising that Mosquito is still a little bit too light and gets chased away. There's all these Sapiros and Voltigeas, and yep, the Mozzie goes down. Um, Pretty big loss. But... 
it is, but at the same time, he's Spanish to blunt this counter thrust. Mm hmm. Yeah. And all this infantry, and all this infantry's been brought on in, it's being brought into the wrong area. It, right. it really is. He's just wasted some ordnance on this on that town. You gotta do something with that, in my mind. Yeah. He's bringing in all his voter gears down south, like you said. The Cromwell's in a pretty good position to, you know, blast him out in the open here, as well as all the other infantry. It's off map, should do a pretty good amount of damage, but once again, I mean, it's gonna take Sean a while to move up all his Vilda Gears to actually try to take any more territory deeper into Karma's line. That's just gonna give Karma time to bring in more air power. Never mind, the Spitfire's right, and that's Mozzie's arse, and that's the second and final Mozzie Pathfinder down. That one was definitely a misplay. Oh. I do like how in the middle we have this one Cromwell here. Trying to capture the barn side all by himself. And those photo gears probably risk they have some sort of anti tank grenade. Unfortunately, I think all they can really do is just kind of hurl insults in harsh language. Mm hmm. There's something about their, their mothers being, you know, hamsters and fathers like elderberries. and might, might have that backwards. Yeah, the, the classic French strategy. Of course. Uh, but a couple more damage moving on in, in, in D, more Grenadiers, and more, actually at Polston, that's an interesting call. Oh, yeah, never mind, that makes perfect sense. I'm a little bit to... of a recessed complacement, but I kind of, I can, I can appreciate that in the loss. Mm-hmm. So yeah, now is really a time for Sean to try and you know, do a major counter-offensive down south, maybe. Or well, heck, even up north, I mean, up north is pretty light in terms of Units. I think Sean could probably do some pretty good half track rush into either the northern town or all the way in the far northern flank onto the enemy hill. Was that one that just went down? Was that the Spitfire? I don't I don't know, I think so. Uh, you, by the way, you can see dev definitely the devastating effect of air power down to the south. Look at all of that smoke I know. and flame. <laughs> Yeah, Karma really put Sean in a, a killing field, yeah. Some of these airborne snipers have actually just continued to bedevil the entire French advance. Mm hmm. And see, even though Karma got pushed out the original forest position, he has set up a pretty nice second defensive line. God damn, you're right. His air power has been like, nutty. Just constantly coming in and. Sean's having a real heyday trying to, or a real pain in the ass, trying to knock him all out. Well, last artillery strike, oh, it's, oh okay, it was going to come in, got cancelled here. Um, now, I, I guess to a certain degree, one thing I'm a little bit nervous about is this aggression that's kind of unsupported. There's no artillery. Uh, there is a, some light vehicle support from the north, but still, we have two squads of Voltigeos that are going up against a four or five times their number. Mm-hmm. Tempest making another run. He's going after that building now. And, um, <laughs> unfortunately for him, because just enough time for the Sephiroth to get in there, and the Sephiroth's... They're, they're making a run for that Zook. Yeah. There you go. Point blank. He can't miss. He might get suppressed. There you go. Gets a kill before they... Oh, they do manage to retreat just in the nick of time. Very sneaky suppress. But in fact, looking like Karma, who's preparing himself for a push over here in the northern side, or if nothing else, no, he's he's definitely preparing himself for a push. Yeah, definitely a ballsy maneuver. I consider. Well, actually, not so much. I mean, he does have that important forest under his control, so he knows there's no anti tank guns that can shoot him, so he can just rush along the uh, the bottom side of that ridge line. Go up over top and then get killed by a shaman. Well, maybe Cromwell will be able to do something. By the way, shaman's gonna be kill. The shamans are going down left, left, right, and center. And one thing that we haven't really touched on too, too much is that really, when it comes down to French infantry, not a lot of AT. Oh, it's not really down to. It's really only the sappers that are equipped with the bazookas. Everyone else, uh, more common for the gears. Aren't gonna be running much AT, which is quite funny. He's having this much issue 
of AT against Six Airborne as Kalmas were doing a really good job of his Cromwell tanks. I mean, they're not, they're not great tanks, his Cromwells, mind you, but he's been using them very well. Heck, even even the Little Johns has been quite skillfully placing in them. Mm -hmm. uh, GMC Bofors, by the way, so we might see a momentary issue for air power, but uh, bombs don't care about that, and that's all he's got to do. Yeah. Infantry counter thrust is done. Sean's being forced to heavily invest in anti-air, which he definitely needs because his constant barrage of typhoons and tempests have been really sure in his lineup. It no, is yeah. really, really strange to see a mechanized division getting thrashed quite so difficult. Yeah, I mean, like up, quite so hard. up north we see Karma rush up a 17 pound onto the enemy hillside, and that's just a beautiful position to shoot down the road at any reinforcements here. Just a very good use of those Cromwells and an air power to make those crick, crick thrust, crick thrust. I didn't even see that Sherman way in the back. That guy is down already. Good lord, good lord. There he yeah, goes. And I, I do not blame that that tap out. Yeah, that was like that was pretty brutal. Six airborne play. I couldn't. I, I never seen him be played so so aggressively before. And it, oh, it's definitely punching above their weight as well. Like, he mm -hmm. kills a number of Tetrarchs. In fact, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so all the Tetrarchs did go down in the first phase. Yeah. And then some later Daimlers. I mean, I was really, really quite surprised by that. One six-pounder. Yeah, but there we go. The six-pounder play. Milner, five kills. Tetrarch, two, uh, two of those Greyhounds. Even you know, the Canadian paratroopers, of course. Four kills right there. Typhoon, several kills. Six pounder, several kills. Tempest, several kills. I mean, Romrails, look at him. Yes. Holy moly! One of, I mean, it's all hard tracks, mind you, but still, pretty important kills here for division. There, it's a big clan cluster in terms of AT. True, very, very true. So it's just very skillfully done. Um, Sean, unfortunately, definitely got thrashed a bit there. Mhm. Mm I feel like if he. In that off-map artillery barrage in the town, if he followed up immediately with it and pushed through that town, I feel like it would have gone like much better for him overall, because by holding that town position, you can really screw up the uh, enemy position down south by cutting them off. Indeed. Indeed. But folks, uh, that was just finishing out the week with a slam-bang finish cover you know, coverage-wise for us. Uh, Rang, any final thoughts as we go out the week? Ah, uh, none. In that case, folks, I will follow the wise man's lead and bid you adieu for now. Until next time, I'm Connor Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.